morning. It's Tuesday, February 18th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, When Words and Deeds Collide. Our scripture is Psalm 119 and also James chapter 2. The psalmist writes, How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I've tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. I've recited aloud all the regulations you've given us. I've rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. And then the Apostle James writes, My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who's poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, Hey, you can stand over there, I'll sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? The psalmist has hidden God's word in his heart, so he'll know the right way to act. And James the Apostle says that word can't stay as a bunch of memory verses. It must become the governor of what a follower of Jesus Christ does day in and day out. Word and deed must match, or those very words convict our deeds of unbelief. This is something of a harsh truth, yet truth it is. And if it is true that the word of God hidden in our hearts is to be obeyed as much as it is to be cherished, then obedience to that word is our concern day and night. What child, after all, is pleasing to his father or mother, having been instructed by the parent to do this and not that, and immediately disregards what he's heard and does what he pleases, not what he's been told? It's that way for the follower of Jesus Christ to not only listen to the word, agree in principle that it is what God would have us do, and even memorize it to earn a merit badge, but then promptly ignore the word by doing the opposite. We become more of a hypocrite than if we just admitted from the beginning that we appreciate the grace of Christ's gift on the cross for our salvation, but, thank you very much, I will now live my life as selfishly as I please. The White House area of Washington is adorned with beautiful blossoming cherry trees, a gift long ago from Japan. As the story is told, young George Washington had an axe, and he couldn't stop chopping down cherry trees. But as anyone who's ever heard a lesson on lying knows, young George would always take credit for his deeds, telling his father it was indeed he who chopped it down. In my sanctified imagination, I can imagine the frustration of Augustine Washington getting in his boy's face and sneering, All right, George, this is the 27th time. I know you're sorry. I just want to know when you're going to stop chopping down my cherry trees. For you today, in the current popular vernacular, words and deeds both matter. God knows you love him in his word. He would like very, very much to watch you do his word, not just love his word. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.